universal shower yeah. or like a what do you call that universal shower uh, universal. wow or like <laughs> leo vice where are you at <laughs> <laughs> Just Hello, everyone. So on today's episode, we are going to be playing a game that we've played in the past and you all loved it. So we're doing it again. It's called Let's Get Deep. There are three different tiers of getting deep. Okay, there's an icebreaker level, a deep level and a deeper level. So we each have a set of cards here. And um, let's start with icebreaker. Yeah, I think as we play, I feel like you guys might be inspired to play this game yourself. So if any of the questions resonate with you, note them or purchase the game for you and your friends and get deep yes not sponsored <laughs> we just love this game it really isn't sponsored it's a great game i have an icebreaker card this is supposed to be level one easy okay let's see if it is okay that's pretty easy tv or social media it's actually not an easy question i know i was really? like i was like because i feel like okay maybe it depends on how much time are you spending on each are you watching and maybe tv as in like netflix YouTube. hbo max like mm. all that youtube are you watching are you consuming something more through the TV streaming format or are you on your phone like scrolling through social media? I actually don't know the answer for myself. I would choose TV. Mm. Mm. I enjoy it more. I think I would enjoy it more too, but I probably spend more time on social media. Based on our last episode about this ep uh, for this topic, you have the most hours spent on Instagram. That's true. That's true. So, okay, I'm going to say social media for me. I, I think I spend more time on social media than TV. If I could choose one, mm. I think just probably social media. I don't know. I think there's something about feeling like more on top of the world, like on like in the know of things. Even though, do I really want to be in the know? I don't yeah. know. I think I think I I think I would I think I would choose social media. I'd like to be the person that chooses TV in longer format because I enjoy it. But I think I would default to social media. Mm, okay. Yes. <laughs> so sort of just staying on top of what is happening, is happening. in the world yeah. feels mm. more important to you. Yeah. I would agree. I think in terms of hours logged, actually, I've been binging this show called Ozark. I've watched three season in a, seasons in the past, like, week, I think. What? It's insane. Okay. I know. I'm just, like, doing my finance report, and it's mm. on the side playing. And so I've definitely consumed more mm. TV lately. This week. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the reason why I said TV is because I feel like I'm inspired more creatively watching more YouTube and TV versus Instagram is like great or social. But I think sometimes I just associate this like negative thing with social totally, media totally, because I've yeah. been on it for so long. I'm just like, I feel like I've, yeah. that's my perception, you know? I would de I would definitely guess TV for Mel because you love like longer format. You're really into shows of all genres and movies mm. and stuff. So totally would guess that for you. Hey, drama queen. Yeah. Here, here. <laughs> I don't know what they say. Anyang <laughs> haseo. Okay, I'll go next. Um, that was actually a long answer. For okay, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? You. Uh, this is a d question. This is like a deeper level question for Helen. Well, yeah. you, you can both answer first. I don't want to start a fight, but <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on Starbucks, so my automatic default answer is going to be Starbucks. West Coast. That's just how Not I just grew West up. Coast. They're worldwide. Worldwide, worldwide. But I think they originated Seattle, so mm -hmm. it's more West Coast, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. Starbucks. Starbucks, yeah. I'm going to say Starbucks for some things, mm. but Dunkin' Donuts for what? For Donuts? their iced coffee. Their coffee is good. And actually, yeah. their food is their pretty good. Their food is good. good, too. Their food is pretty good. But every time I have, and it, it's funny because it's like, it has to be the Dunkin' Donuts in Boston for some reason. Mm. Whether it's the weather, it's like a little crisper or temperature mm. or something, it just makes the iced coffee hit like so much better. So you're also an iced coffee in the ice weather. Yeah, oh, that okay. is interesting. Yeah. yeah, I would 100% prefer Dunkin's iced coffee in Boston in cold weather over Starbucks That's very iced specific. coffee. <laughs> it's very specific, but I will say I, I generally get Starbucks more just because it's on every corner yeah, of yeah. every street. That's a good question for you. Yeah. Okay, next one for Icebreaker. City or country to live in? Not like e not, not like a country, but like country living. In countryside, yeah. yeah. Um, I have to say city. I think as much as I've gone through phases of wanting to be in nature and things like that, I at the at the core I like the city more. Mm. I like the buzz and the mm. the alive, the feeling that someone is awake at every hour doing something. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely country for me. Which yeah, you surprised? I am. I have too. always been a city girl. I grew up in the city of Boston, moved to downtown LA in the whole city and i and i get it like yeah. the buzz of waking up and seeing someone biking or running mm. down the street and seeing the morning commute and just being like oh 
oh, you know, sipping on your coffee, looking outside. But there is something about now that I've moved out more into the suburb. I wouldn't call it the suburbs. It's just like not in the city now. Yeah, yeah. It the peace and quiet does feel really nice, and I think the safety is something that I、mm. hold on to, and that like that matters more in my life now than living in the city and you know just. Questioning whether that's human or dog poop, like I don't know if I want to do that. And my my child would、I、still play that game. Sometimes yeah, my child would definitely step in that, you know, or like、mm. poke at it. Yeah, so yeah. I think just something that's a little bit more cleanly and safe for kids is what I'm what I lean towards.、Totally、How about、sense. for you? I'm shocked. I know, right? What the, I, really <laughs> I think、that. three years ago I would have said city. Okay,、mm. I'm a city. I think it's like, oh, that shocked me. I thought you would、yeah. for sure choose like country. Me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe like, not country. I'm sorry. Well, well, when you think of country, are you thinking like thinking, farmland? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I was thinking like you really like like farmhouse aesthetic design. So I'm thinking of Mel <laughs> like in her like Hell, wooden Helen, like wooden no, barn, you know. having like like I would imagine Mel like lamping though, not like living like churning your own butter kind of. Okay. What if you lived on a vineyard? Maybe I don't know. Like. No, <laughs> you prefer the city. I think that, I like. That does surprise me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I like Taipei, like Tokyo,、uh-huh. like that's what I think about. Like that maybe because I mean those cities are cleaner,、mm. so it's different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think when, he, when I originally read the question, I thought country like I'm being a farm and I'm gonna like be a farmer and I'm like that's <laughs> definitely not my lifestyle that I appreciate.、Mm. I think also with being like when I think of a country home too, you're so isolated from everyone around you that at night、that's、it feels、true. actually kind of scary to me. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, that. that's can the see thing. That. I felt. That's why you just have a lot of uplighting everywhere. Yeah, but I don't know. Anyways, I'm city. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Next icebreaker question. We're still at level one. What is your favorite place you've visited? Like ever? Yeah, ever.、Mm. Oh, wow, wow. That's、oh, a、yeah. lot. To, that's a hard one. Favorite place? It depends. It depends. I will. I will say I always go back to Tokyo. Is my、mm. favorite city, and I've visited twice, and it's still just. The the cleanliness, how pristine it is, how kind people are, how safe it is, how technologically advanced it is, I think that all draws me to the city. I feel like there's also a lot of history coupled with modernness, and the food is、mm. amazing. I love sushi, so Tokyo is probably my favorite to visit. I have many other ones、mm. in mind, but I will say that. Oh, my mind went everywhere. I was like places.、Mm. That's so broad.、Um, Their favorite place. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna go with one that I've been to a couple of times, and I feel like I'm starting to pull a lot more from like nostalgia、mm-hmm. more recently. I don't know why, but mine would be the Getty Museum in Los Angeles.、Um, it's just one of the most beautiful spaces, and I started going there when I was in high school with my French class. So I think I have like memories of. Of like that part of my life, and then、um, mm. going also, I I would sometimes take like random days off work as like a solo like mental health day, and then that's like the place I would go by myself, and、mm. um, yeah, it's just beautiful. I don't know, that's that that place. How about city?、Us. I'm curious about city for you. City, because you have city, traveled around the world too. I think I actually do like Paris or New York City,、mm. and honestly, it's probably much more for the idea and the romanticness of it than it is from any actual memories that I have. Of、mm. being there, <laughs> see, see, yeah. but yeah. Oh, I don't know why I can't think of one. But like, like Taipei for you, Taipei for sure. But you know, it's weird. I thought of a place. This is really random. This is also nostalgic. Whenever I go to SFO International Terminal,、mm. I think of going to Taipei, Taipei or Tokyo.、Mm. And I think whenever I'm there, that's when I feel really happy because it's yeah, the anticipation、yeah. of going somewhere. And、I、SFO.、Like that. That terminal is where I always feel like the most like tingly and excited, yeah, and like when、yeah. they call your, I just we also go like four or five hours ahead of time because your you know parents want to be on time. So whenever I'm there, and it's not so much anymore, I get this excited feeling.、Mm. I actually felt that last year when I went to Taiwan. So、mm. airport probably Taipei. It's yeah, a familiar yeah. feeling when I land and I smell the air. I get I just automatically、mm. smile. Yeah, I like that. Well, randomly, there is a place I really want all of us to go one day. San Sebastian、oh. in Spain.、Mm. Mm. We have to go there one day. If any of you have been there, oh, it is just the food, the the beaches, so good. Anyway, tangent. All right, cardio or yoga? I think we know my answer. <laughs> Cardoga. Yeah, <laughs> Cardoga. <laughs> just kidding.、Um, yeah, I mean, actually, this one is kind of hard because I used to like 
running um, more for the endorphins because I always feel so good after a run. Sorry. But <laughs> with the dolphins. <laughs> You're dolphins? My mind is- I love to go running for the dolphins. <laughs> Um, running by the ocean yeah yeah, yeah but uh but yoga yoga is i feel like that's something i want to do forever into uh mm. my old old age so i've got to choose yoga dang sometimes i feel like yoga's hard like the way Dude, you, you so have the hard. bend yeah yeah i can't imagine doing that in an older age but that's why you got to keep doing it so that yeah. when you're there it's you've already can do it <laughs> it's like you're a rubber band it's more elasticy mm-hmm. and i guess if you don't then you're like a frozen rubber band <laughs> or something what's yours um cardio for sure i am someone who loves going on runs Mm, um i like playing basketball i like Mm. playing tennis i like playing sports i don't love i don't know i used to think oh yoga is just stretching but it's not it's Mm. actually once you put your like full intent into it it's actually very difficult and i end up sweating all the time when i do yoga so yoga i know it's really good for your body but i think i want more high intensity stuff if i'm gonna be moving my Mm. body yeah Yeah. that makes sense I actually surprisingly was teetering between two answers. I've noticed that I've been doing more yoga lately. Yeah. And I definitely cannot, I can't touch my toes. But I enjoy the active recovery component of it. Mm. Um, but if I had to, had to choose, I think I would choose cardio because I enjoy like a good dance session. Mm. Like one mm. hour of dance. Sometimes I just forget that I'm moving and I'm sweating. I'm like, oh, but I'm having so much fun. So I yeah. would probably choose cardio. Yeah. Yeah. My last icebreaker is, ooh. Bath or shower? No context of any situation. If I had to choose one, uh, I don't like the last time I took a bath was a long time ago. So I'm just going to say shower because I'm usually like an efficiency type person. Mm. And uh, also, you can relax a lot in like the showers that have those like beautiful, super strong, like, sh- like what do you call those? Like the rain. Yeah. The rain shower. Shower head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, I think there's nothing quite like a very powerful water pressure shower. And, which you can't and, have in California. Really? Yeah, there's Wait, a limit. Really? There's a there's a limit stopper thingy for the shower heads in California. Oh, I did California. not know that. Some people okay. take it out, but it's for the water restriction or, you know. Oh, just, well, yeah, the place I'm at maybe water. is doing water this illegally. Mm. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I talked to my contractor about this. Oh, He's like, okay. I could take it out if you want, but a lot more water will be flowing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's illegal, but no one's going to come into your shower and check. <laughs> You know, your water bill will run a lot we'll, higher. Uh, 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 yeah, that makes good sense. to know. Um, you, for me, I would definitely say shower. I want to like baths. I don't think I take enough baths. The last one I took was when I was pregnant and we were in mm. Mexico for our mm. baby moon. And um, the resort had decorated our <gasps> bathtub and Aww. put like flowers and roses in there. And we both went in there and we're like, oh, whoa, so romantic. But then I just felt like I was slipping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like rolling around in there like, oh, how do you stay up? Like, where do you put your head? I think some people roll like a towel and put it behind yeah, their heads. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, okay. Like, but then I can feel it on my shoulder. Like it's, <laughs> it's not the most comfortable. And then it's hot. Uh, yeah, yeah. I could see this being very like you want it to be or yeah. like it should be romantic, but it could be very I think if the tub was retrofitted for your body, mm. then I could see that being comfortable mm. and a good experience. And if there was like suction cups that I wasn't slipping. Oh, OK. That's actually really should I invent this? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. Do you enjoy? I feel like you enjoy baths a lot, actually. I do. But I actually have not taken a bath in a very long time. Mostly because it's really hot outside. Mm. That's true. It's so Only hot. I just thing. know every time we go to a hotel, you're like, ooh, I want to take a bath in that tub. But I never have. Yeah. But yeah, I think But if I had to choose right now in my current state of mind, I would choose a shower. Mm. My, I actually love my shower. My shower pressure, water pressure has to be intense. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. my water pressure, I don't know if you took a shower in my, in, my, in my bathroom, but the people that have taken a shower have said, Mel, your pressure is kind of insane. I was like, yeah, it's great. They're like, no, I feel like it's gonna, the water is going to like, like hurt me in the face. Oh, yeah. it feels, oh, like it's too strong. Yeah, it feels like a slap in the face, but I love the slap <laughs> on my head. It just feels so good. Anyway, so I'll the say slap sh- on your head. So I, feel, I will say shower right now. Nice. Okay. Universal shower. Yeah. Or like a, what do you call that? Universal shower. Like, universal. Wow. <laughs> or like, um, <laughs> Leo Vice, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> just kept talking. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Helen here. You've been hearing me talk about Pampers for a while now on this podcast, the diaper brand that we've been using for our soon-to-be two-year-old. And for anyone out there who is still in the diaper phase of parenthood, this one is for you. 
We've been using Pampers Swathers and it's given us back several minutes of our lives. Why? Because Pampers Swathers prevents up to 100% of leaks, even blowouts. Meaning we are not constantly changing our baby out of his clothes, cleaning up the mess afterwards, and doing several more loads of laundry than we prefer to. Swaddler's Diapers has a blowout barrier, which is an innovative back pocket in the diaper to help prevent messes from coming out. Pampers Swaddler's is always, always in stock in our household because when our baby is asleep for more than 11 hours, you know we gotta have an extra absorbent diaper for dry nights and less wake-ups in the middle of the night. With Pampers Swaddler's, you can rest assured that you have superior leak protection while keeping baby's skin healthy. For trusted protection, trust Pampers, the number one pediatrician recommended brand. The holidays are right around the corner, which means parties, gatherings, travel, lots of things that might require some new wardrobe pieces. But if you're like me and not the biggest fan of shopping, I would suggest checking out Stitch Fix. You can think of them as your personal style partner. Your stylist will learn about your tastes and collaborate with you on looks you'll love without breaking the bank. You share your style, sizes, and budget with the quick style quiz, and they send five items right to your door. You can try everything on at home, keep items you like, and send back the rest. Shipping and returns are always free. I have found their experience to be really convenient and a great way to get new styles. In fact, I'm currently in my go-to casual, but not too casual, gray pants that I got from them last fall. Thanks, Stitch Fix. They just get me, and they'll get you too. Try today at stitchfix.com slash abg and you'll get 25% off and you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash abg. Stitchfix.com slash abg. First deep question. Spend the rest of your life feeling itchy or being tickled and why? Mm. Oh. Oh. I'll be Damn. honest. I hate both of these things. Yeah, same. I hate both really, of Really like a lot. Oh, it's like a really close tie for me. Because I get really angry if someone tickles me. Like, I get, like, pissed. She does. <laughs> but the thing, the itchiness, it's just so uncomfortable. Oh, I don't know why I'm thinking tickling. Oh. Oh, wow. Itchy okay. is like, I'm always itchy and it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, I will say itchy because there's there's a cream for it or something to mitigate the feeling of it. Versus if you're being tickled. That's true. You cut a, cut a hand off, but like, yeah, you can't stop that That's from true. happening if that is constantly happening. So I would say itchy. When I was younger, I had hives growing up and it was like it took over my Aww. entire body and it was the worst. And my mom would take a, a rubber slipper, put it over fire and like use that to slap me because it was just so bad. And it was uh, we used like chamomile. I was always covered in pink and it was a terrible time. But I'd rather have that than being tickled. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Well, yeah, my answer was going to be similar because I felt like for itchy, I don't know why, but I feel like if you go in the cold, it kind of helps to numb it. <sighs> mm. Oh, so you know I what? would go and do like cryotherapy or something. Mm. <laughs> Just sit, sit in those like in the frozen area. But the other thing is, I think I also thought about if someone's just like constantly tickling you, maybe you'll get used to it. But I don't, I feel like I would get really angry and I'm afraid what I would do to the person. That's true. Yeah. Cut their hand off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I changed so. my mind. Sorry, after, after explanation. <laughs> so you choose itchy. I would choose itchy. Okay. Yeah. Universal itchiness. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, that sucks. Okay, next one here. What is one useless skill that you have? Useless? Useless. Useless. Okay, I'll share mine. Oh, God. <laughs> this is, this is my. Oh. My double think, jointed thumb. Yeah, I have the same weird. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is not even a skill. But I remember when I was younger and people were like, oh, what kind of like makes you unique or different? I was like, my thumb. <laughs> <That's> okay. <cute. laughs> I was thinking of actually when I was really little, my knees used to be, I used to be like double jointed in my knees. Whoa. So it'd go back further. It's not as severe now, but I don't, yeah, I don't know if that was a skill either. Oh, I also have like, uh, I don't know, like a, a little like, is it lock? Jaw, whatever. Oh, oh god! Oh, you can gosh. pop your jaw. Ugh, ah! That freaks me out. because um, I'm always so scared of it, like popping out of place. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my son has it too, because he's been doing this too. Oh. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. Helen had a talent show. That's what she would do. Yeah. <laughs> Some uh, weird things with my body. Okay, what's yours? I have two. Um, one, I think I'm pretty good at like not today, but I'm pretty good at putting on falsies without a tweezer. I use my hand. Same. Oh, okay. I do, I also, that's a very that useful skill, skill yeah, to yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But I don't think it's going to like, you know. Like, could it translate to anything else? Like, I don't even be hired for putting on falsies. You, you know could I mean? be. 
But I need to do other stuff. I make up anyways. But yeah, yeah. I remember in college, the girls would line up when we're getting ready to help me. I helped them do eyelashes. They're false. Oh, wow. wow. So you're good enough to be okay. sought after to be an applicator. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you put it um, the glue on and then kind yep. of bend it a little bit uh, so it goes around yeah. the curve of your yeah. eye? Today is not a good example. So don't look at my eyes right now. <laughs> Zoom on in. <laughs> <laughs> that camera the other odd thing i can do which i can't do today but i can make my stomach uh, oh yeah gar- oh, gar- she gargle, can. Or I can gargle my stomach bit. and it yeah. feels like it's just like doing it's like her thumb thing but in my tummy and i can make it can like you put your can you put the mic to your stomach i want to i'm curious if people can hear i it. can't do it right now i'm trying <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it is like a wave it's like a it's little like, yeah yeah it sounds you like can that. hear the inside one day it, yeah. i'll show you y'all <laughs> anyways that's my you very useless what when does that happen is it after a certain meal i think when it's like really empty Oh, okay. Or it, like just liquid probably because the like liquid, liquid is yeah. sloshing around. Yeah. yeah. What was yours? I don't really ha- – I, I can't think of – what would be a useless skill? All your skills are useful. No. I, mean, I don't uh, – I was like I could like do a headstand in yoga but I guess that's, that's like pretty useless. weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like very cool. I wish I could do that. We tried. I think we did try. It was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that is, that's a cool skill but, okay. probably, but probably not very useful. Useless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's good for your body. Is it? In you know when they way. say like when you put your, lift your legs up? Elevation or going upside down to yeah. allow the circulation in a different direction. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What is something you're not good at? You're going to have to headstand, huh? <laughs> <laughs> headstand and stomach things. Yeah. Um, okay, I have one. Yeah. I am not good at knowing the titles of songs or mm, ooh, mostly that's songs. A, that's a good. Yeah. I'm really bad at that too. Yeah. I can never remember the names of things. You can't just take mine. You need your own. Yeah, yeah, I know. Just I need kidding. my own. I know. I was like, for me too. Janet's not yeah. good at finding out what she's not good yeah, at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or what's a useless skill? I have something that I used to be good at that I started getting bad at recently. What? Parallel parking. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying because I remember so recently with these ladies, we went to get our like, we went, we went, uh, we, oh, it was like our retreat. We went to this like scalp spa thing. For your birthday? And for yeah. my birthday. And I was parallel parking. And usually like, because I've done this so many times because I used to live in downtown for many years. And I was like, Pulling in and I like overshot or undershot. I don't remember. Um, right, you started ugh. turning once your car was lined up with the other car and you started turning. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, I think the way I usually do things is sometimes I don't really like go by the standard way, but somehow it'll work and then I just keep doing it. But this time I've been like over, yeah, like undershooting or overshooting. Um, so that's, that's something that's annoying. I remember <laughs> Mel was like, all right, Janet, let's see your parallel parking skills. And I was joking, but I was like, shit, I put too much pressure, too much pressure on you. <laughs> it might have been the but- pressure. I will say, though, part of me was like, because she's about to hit the van. I was like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. I got nervous. You know what was also, it's the, I'm driving a rental car right now and it has a camera. I'm used to not, I'm used oh. to parallel parking without a camera. So, mm-hmm. so give me more. you're relying on it too much. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe I was, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it wasn't maybe, or something about the, the thing is a little different. Honestly, if you're not, <laughs> just to be honest, I think with your, when you parallel park, you have to be like used to your car and like the sizing. Oh, and that's, it's true, new, that's true. It's, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. And I'm actually, I'm okay, like, tapping the the curb. Like, I use that sometimes as a sign that I've gone far enough. Or no, sometimes you tap the... Janet! <laughs> no, Maybe, yeah, okay. As long, I guess if your rental is not, is okay with that. But don't they usually, I think they usually measure, like, scratches for a certain length. Oh, the guy told me. <laughs> okay told me, parking. he was like because i was looking at the scratches when we did the walkthrough he's like oh they don't care about that it's just it's like no dents and i was like mm, oh, i just know oh. for like leases when you return it they oh, always lease measure, probably, yeah, yeah. measure yeah. like for how rentals, long no, the, no, no. the yeah. scratches are yeah how about for you mel um i'm really bad at baseball random <laughs> i just so random i think when a bit a small ball oh. <laughs> when a small ball is being thrown towards my face i don't i'm afraid i won't be able to catch it mm. Mm. so like tennis <laughs> golf you know what? Here's the thing. I think it's with tennis. I associate like a big racket, so I'll have more surface to like hit the ball. Oh, I that's can hit a good it. point. Okay. Ping pong, like a small paddle, small ball. Baseball, <laughs> long small bat, and small ball. <laughs> I don't. That's true. It's a harder your... tool to. It's just a... hit. Yeah. The surface area. There's like the it's hard to like. If you think about tennis, your racket's so big, your ball is like bigger to yeah. easier. Yeah, for yeah, you yeah, said yeah, ping yeah. pong, small ball, small racket. Baseball, small bat, small ball. <laughs> I'm not good at hitting things, so I, I'll just say that. I get you. I know what you're mean. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. There's other things. Or really... It's probably because ping pong, there's less distance, and so it's less scary, and the ball is lighter. But the baseball the is heavier, hitting, and it's, yeah. you're, they're chucking it at you. Yeah. And it's further, so that's scarier. That's true. Versus the bat size and the ball size. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. That both, makes sense. Would, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm also not really good at dodgeball. 
Oh Sorry. my god, I have so many bad memories from dodgeball. Yeah. So I, I, there's other things that aren't ball related, I could say, but I, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. So you don't like ball sports? I don't like ball sports. There I like go. watching it sometimes. If you were to have a destination wedding somewhere, where would it be? Hmm. Jespa had my wedding. It was um, not really destination, but we did have one in mind if we wanted to do destination. Mm. And it would have been at a place where Philip and I both loved so much and it would have required our friends to make a trip out of it, obviously destination. Banff, Canada. Mm. That's where, oh, it's just so gorgeous. So, so beautiful. And we even like called the hotel to see if they had availability and like all of this stuff. Mm. Um, we just wanted to give our friends that experience of a reason to go there together. Mm. But that would be... The, the destination that we would have mm, chosen. Beautiful. That is on my list. I want to go. Yeah. Mm. I know people have gone here a lot, but I don't know why Hawaii is just on my list. Hawaii, I feel like it's like farther enough from California, but it's also just so beautiful. And for me, it's also because my family, I have family mm -hmm. there. So it makes more sense for my my history, I guess. Yeah. Actually, have you thought of that as like an actual location? I, I scavenge, but I feel like it's going to have to be Southern California. Okay. But mm -hmm. I'm not opposed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Destination. Um, I wasn't thinking too far actually because I was like the practical side versus like the like the fantasy side. Um, it's a destination because it's outside of LA, but it's not too far. Uh, Joshua Tree, I I still I think I talked about that before as a great location. I think it just feels so different than LA, and there's something very romantic to me about the setting of like a desert and even just the picturesque like joshua trees themselves mm -hmm. um yeah mm -hmm. know, it's, yeah it's, it's very like boho chic vibes yeah I like. yeah 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 be stuck on an island alone or with someone who never stops talking why depends on who's talking <laughs> like if you want to listen to them yeah that's yeah, what i don't yeah. want to be like dude shut up i don't want to be here with you <laughs> yeah Ooh. okay how about if it's someone that you're okay with if they talk or not <laughs> Then yeah, I, I would choose a talker. It, I feel like it's entertaining. It gets it passes the time. Mm -hmm. That's true. And then would it be really rude if you just like go to the bathroom for? She say like, I gotta go to the bathroom and then just be gone for like a couple hours. That's true. But I feel like that. No, I think the question is asked if they constantly talk, even if you're in the bathroom. Yeah, you would always have to be hearing them. Um, for a long time, I actually might would rather just be alone. I think. I think I would also rather be alone. I, I'm thinking about like past travels where I've traveled with friends who I am not the most compatible with. And that's mm. that doesn't mean that they were talking too much, but it is a form of incompatibility or something mm. that rubs me the wrong way. And many times I was just like, man, I just want to explore by myself now, mm. but I'm like tied to this person. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I would actually be more alone and maybe like develop something, you know, with my time. And energy okay instead of listening to someone talk <laughs> i don't know why i keep thinking about tim like i was like T tim like he won't talk your ear off but he's like so he's a chatty person i was like i'll bring tim that yeah yeah, yeah. But i was i was on the on the fence because i could see the benefit of being with or having having the option of having someone talk yeah but um but i could see i don't know yeah i think it depends I just, on how long you're that's, on that's true yeah for. yeah if it's like two days person talking if it's like yeah. a week alone that's okay mm. yeah when you were a kid what did you think you were going to be when you grew up so i have two i think i really wanted to be a cash register you want to be a cash <laughs> register a cashier no. cashier <laughs> Ooh, sorry yeah <laughs> i was always fascinated with the cashiers at the grocery stores i thought it was really fun to like you know like scan your item and like give uh, now that we have like we could do self-checkout but i think i was just really fascinated with like that you want to be a self-checkout machine <laughs> <laughs> oh, no i just really i really liked it and then the second thing i had i wrote down in my second grade journal I was really fascinated with fashion and I wanted to be a motel. I didn't know how to spell model. I oh, <laughs> I was like, that Mel, is so cute. I know. I want That's to be wrong. You're like, I'm here, I'm trying to be like machines or like inanimate objects. But <laughs> I really wanted to be a model because Aww. back then in elementary school, I was actually really tall for my age. Like mm. my, my growth spurt happened when I was in elementary school and I stopped mm. in fifth grade. So I was really tall. Um, and I used to always like walk, I had a, like this garden in my backyard. I'd pretend like to like walk the runway. How cute is and the, that? Yeah. And then my uncle worked in fashion. So I was really inspired by him. And I wrote that in my journal. M-O-T-E-L. Aww. <laughs> a motel and a cash, cash. register. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cute. You could be a motel, a cash register in a, a motel. motel. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, cute. I think for me, it was to be a teacher. Oh, mm. mostly because when I was a kid, I just had my sister who sometimes didn't want to play with me. And so I played with my dolls. I always had a bunch of just dolls and stuffed animals lined up along the edge of my bed. And I would sit them all down and be like, 
it is time for a lesson. And oh. then I would create a lesson, which is basically me writing. When I first learned how to write S cursive in cursive, I just connected so many S's and I would show them, this is how you write an S. I just have that distinct memory of doing that. And so I would probably say teacher, teacher. for me because I liked teaching my animals. Oh, that's so animals. cute. <laughs> yeah. Never became a teacher. <laughs> but I could see how there's a sense of like you maybe like to lead people or mm. like – teach or not maybe not teach formally but there's a lot of like within business and with management that is around teaching and leading people right thanks hey. yeah I made that connection yeah. <laughs> trying to make mel's connection now yeah no, i was thinking that she was like a cash hey, register you have your own merch that you can sell now that's true yeah. <laughs> i was also was uh, i was a hostess for five for six years so i was really oh, good yeah. with the register okay. yeah, yeah, shopify.com yeah. slash asian boss girl, asian boss girl. <laughs> check out our merch i'm a motel on those photos yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> model that is your know. dream to be on that page that's true and you are, your oh, dreams came true, you made it come true. Yeah. i hope you guys all know it's a model not like a hotel, hotel. Thing, like, a, like a building <laughs> just want to clarify um let's see what did i want to be when i grew up i if, i remember in third grade um i wanted to be a writer mm. uh just because i think we started learning the concept of like stories and mm. what are like what is a beginning what is like a problem what is a climax and um, events that have to happen in a conclusion and characters and all that so I remember really loving to like have like to do creative writing and stuff and, and journaling so oh that, that sounds cool. like perfect for you too <laughs> because I feel like you are doing that now mm -hmm. yeah in some format I yeah. am I feel like I am writing so yeah I swear I have the worst luck with doctors. Living in LA, it has taken me a few years to find the right doctor under my insurance. I had to find someone within my network, see if they're taking new clients, and then read through different reviews to see if they're good or not. One time, when I finally felt like I found the right doctor, the earliest appointment was three months away, and then two weeks before my appointment, they called me letting me know my doctor had to cancel. It was not a very good experience, which is why I'm happy I heard about ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patients patient review doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 to 48 hours. That's it. Luckily, I finally found a new doctor, but if I had needed this product, this is what I would use. Go to ZocDoc.com ABG and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash ABG. ZocDoc.com slash A-B-G. All right, so now we're going to the most challenging, or I guess the most like, um, these questions should be the most, cause us to have the most vulnerability or get the deepest. So going deeper, what stories from your life will you tell your children? I probably will share the stories of me growing up in Taiwan, like just mm. being my time with my grandparents. Um, I hear these stories a lot from my mom when she talks like her childhood with her grandparents. So mm. I feel like it's like a, a theme I'm noticing. Mm. So I'd probably share that though. Yeah, just like being back in the motherland is just such a significant time for me that I probably share moments of that. Uh, stories I would tell my kid. I don't know why the first thing that came to mind was um, spending like three months in Kenya mm. after graduation. And like, I think because I want to show the, or like exemplify to them um, being able to go somewhere out of your comfort zone and going into something that's a little unknown um, and how like challenging but also like great an experience can be. Um, I say that now, but I also know that being on the other side, my parents, when I told them I was going to do this, my mom was like, oh, my God, I know nothing about this. Where are you going? How do I contact you? Mm -hmm. This is before the time of like our cell. This was when cell phones were still, I think, like flip phones at the mm -hmm. time. So yeah. Um, I don't know if I would want to tell them because then they're like, I want to do that. And I'm like, no, yeah. don't go. <laughs> I think there's a part of me that would want to share like everything with my kid. Like, mm. yeah, how I grew up, where I grew up. I would want to also know like my parents' story a little bit more. Like something mm. I really want to do with my parents more is to go to like China with them and see where they grew up and just mm. be like, I want to be able to show my kid the tree that my dad and mom like mm. would sneak off to because their village was so small. So they always they always talk about this tree that they would sneak off to that was by the river and no one saw them. And that's where they kind of like had their dates. Aww, it's like, where's yeah. this tree? I want to see this tree. So I can like tell those stories. That got me to thinking, would you share with your kids your dating stories? That to me, mm, I don't know my parents' dating question. stories, but sometimes I hear a little bit of like, oh, my aunt, you know, had a fling with this restaurant worker that's serving us. And I'm like, back in China, I'm like, what? What are these <laughs> stories? And then I try to ask and they're like, no, 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 that's nothing. But would you share with your kids your dating stories? Mm. Yes. 
Yeah? Because I think it's a lesson for them. Mm -hmm. My mom, actually, my mom told me, she said, when I broke up my first boyfriend, she goes, and I was really sad. She goes, I wish I had more stories to share. Or I wish Mm -hmm. I went through, I dated more. So she has more experience. And so Mm -hmm. for me, I think sharing my dating experiences will maybe inform my child how to navigate dating a little bit. I'll probably share like, 40% of my dating stories. I feel like I went through a lot of useless things through online dating um, that are not, no, no great lessons to come out of those. But, but yeah, I guess I would, I would share selectively Mm. (laughs) certain things. Mm. Actually, now I want to ask my mom, like, how many boyfriends did you have? You should ask. I will. (laughs) What is something embarrassing you do when no one is home? Mm. I don't know. I feel like Mel has a lot of answers. For She's this laughing one. to herself right now. <laughs> it's like, which one is I know, the most embarrassing? Most embarrassing. Um, okay, so I don't think it's embarrassing, but I do do this when no one's home. I uh, I don't do this as much anymore, and I used to love it. But I would put on my most sexiest outfit. I would put on heels, and I would dance from the mirror for an hour with my headphones on. Wow, an hour is a long time. Or Ooh, as, with your headphones on? Yeah, because I don't want it to be loud. I don't know why. Oh, I still okay. feel like I need to like. It has to be like need to be zoned in, yeah. And I think it just kind of remind me like you just like want to let loose and just I think just dancing and like feeling feeling myself. I felt yeah. confident and sexy, and I think realizing I like I haven't done that in like a couple of years. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's also because like it, it's really, it's really sad too because now like my mirror in my room, it's I'm dancing, I'm hitting my bed because it's so close. <laughs> oh. So I had to like like drag everything out. So I actually used to do that since I was ten. I would put on Aww. like my I'd bring like my stereo into the bathroom. Aww. And I would yeah. lip sync and I would like pretend I was performing. So just something I've always done. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that you, well, you realize that you hadn't done it in a while. So maybe it's time to yeah. bring mm-hmm. out the heels. Yeah. I need to bring out, I need to buy more sexier clothes too. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm pretty sure when we had like during COVID times when we all were, I think one of our friends, Eric, shipped oh out tequila bottles to each of our homes so uh-huh. that we could actually like t- do a tequila tasting. I'm pretty sure you were dancing with your sequined oh my god in oh, front yeah, of the had. mirror <laughs> and then mel disappeared and we're like hey mel where you at that was no response <laughs> to this day whenever they bring up that moment because i think it was like no actually it was sake night we oh sake, sake night, night. Yes, we sake finished night. the sake and then i think you hit a certain level you're like i think i went to my my cabinet i was like who wants whiskey now like, like, really, oh yeah I, I just i went and like, yourself because <laughs> you're the only person at home yes yeah. no actually my roommate was home she goes okay. oh mel's having a good time in there <laughs> She was like, what's going on? You and come out to the kitchen in your sequin top. The sequin top came out. Then she saw me grab the handle. She's like, uh, okay, have fun in there. Yeah. And then I remember because, like, they recorded it. And to this day, whenever our friends are like, oh, you want to see it? I was like, please burn that clip. I will never want to see and relive that moment because I'm so embarrassed. Oh, It was fun. It's it private. Fun. It's I understand. Private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the end. Your turn. I don't know. Like, I lived by myself for a really long time. So I was like, what do I do when no one's home? Like, everything? That's- you walk around, I feel like you'd walk around naked. <laughs> I do. I think that is actually now that I'm like, Shoot, I I've it. been living around with people. It's like, yeah, I have to like be more like conscious of putting like clothes on mm, mm-hmm. or just even small things like it's so comfortable as a woman to walk around with a, without a bra on but different you know levels of oh, our comfort yeah. with who's like at home now you're like oh out of respect for them maybe I should like put a bra mm-hmm. on or mm-hmm. um maybe that's I think that would be the main thing yeah. oh and then also it's easier I would just like talk to myself sometimes like out loud like oh. you know like instead of in your head like if you're like typing something or something happens you're like gosh darn it why did why did that happen instead of it being inner dialogue you're like I'm just gonna have it be outer dialogue that's <laughs> that maybe I wouldn't do if someone was there <laughs> you guys ever do that when you're like in the car by yourself you're just like I feel like you would still hear it from me <laughs> Same. <laughs> like the gosh like the dang it like that would that would just come out but yeah I don't know if I talk to myself <laughs> I'm trying to think if I do or not, what which I'm not saying that's like a, a, a weird thing yeah. or an embarrassing it is thing. Kind of, just... It's kind of a weird thing. Does anyone else? I feel like a good amount of people, when you're by yourself, especially if you live alone, do you talk to yourself? I will sing really loudly and <laughs> like, love this. I will think to myself, okay, make sure the windows are like closed. And I will actually consciously look at all the windows uh-huh. before like belting. <laughs> okay. So that and then just walking around naked, that is definitely something where it's like, the 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 pants are gonna come unbuttoned. Yeah, if I'm alone. Mm. Exactly. And then if it's like if I don't want to like go get sweatpants, then I would just take them off and put them on the floor and yeah. just like lay out on the couch, <laughs> yeah. spread my legs, and just like go. I, I'm like this. Yeah, that's your actually that's your that's your <laughs> favorite position. That is that's how melted I am at home. into the chair, melted <laughs> with popcorners on my lap. What do you think the most important part of family is? I feel like the most impor- important part of family to me is having a good relationship. 
with family, which sounds like such a basic answer. But I say this because I feel like with family, there can be a lot of tension Mm -hmm. that is built up over the years, whether it's money related or just personality difference or something, right? And I see that and I think to myself, I need to have a happy home in the future and that means having a good relationship with each other or accepting each other Mm -hmm. for the differences Mm -hmm. like i've said this to philip in the past too it's like i don't care how much like we i don't know just because we're a second generation we're able to like build up wealth more i'm like i don't care how much we wealth we build up whatever if we don't have a happy home then i don't want that Mm -hmm. i'd rather live in a like very humble home or whatever but our family connection and dynamic and relationship has to be unbreakable Mm -hmm. so that to me i feel like is very important is the relationships and making sure that that's like all kind of kosher that is yeah i think that's a great priority to have um i don't know why i thought maybe this is a little bit of the cultural upbringing the first thing that came to mind was that family is there to kind of teach you the ways of society or kind Mm. of be your the buffer from the individual and the rest of the world so i guess if they're the buffer they're both the support but they're also there to help you like navigate those things if like as maybe as like thinking of parents guiding children to teach them the ways of like how to get along how the rules work of the world I guess Mm -hmm. um that was my first kind of thought Mm -hmm. yeah I don't Mm -hmm. know how about you Mel I think my answer is similar to Helen's I think a lot about my mom she always we have a group chat I feel like I don't know if it's communication but for me it's just showing up for each other in the family like Mm -hmm. I know my mom what she loves the most is when all of us are in the house together and just Mm -hmm. having dinner like she just wants Mm -hmm. all of us under one roof being together yeah Yeah. even when i go to taiwan it was always like a point of contention when i didn't want to stay with my grandpa's because we were just crammed in there and i was like i don't mind getting a hotel room Mm. she's like oh i want all of us in the house yeah that's it she just wants us in one roof and she always i don't know just like it's like that closeness that tightened it feeling and also just making sure we're like keeping each other like updated like she's always reminding us don't mm-hmm. forget to call grandpa don't forget to check up on him like always like making sure you say hello like that kind of thing so just there's this level of, like we're always connected somehow and let's maintain this connection as, yeah. as much as we can yeah and i think something my mom always says like the number one value for her is respecting your elders and taking care of your elders mm-hmm. she says that's like the number one thing mm-hmm. so i think that's also been something that's been trickled down to me of like just making sure that that like family unit and dynamic is very, very strong. Mm. Yeah. All right. Next question. Do you believe in second chances? Why or why not? I think it does depend on what happened in the scenario. But overall, I feel like I do believe in second chances. I think there's redemption. I would agree with that. I think it depends on the case. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just have to cut that tie loose and just never see that person again but i think more often not like what was the saying that someone said good humans do bad things and sometimes people do things and they learn a lesson from it and they will never do that again Mm -hmm. and if that is the case where their intention has actually changed for the next time around then i do believe that humans just are flawed and do deserve a second chance Mm -hmm. as long as their intentions are different and better. I definitely believe in second chances. However, there's a saying to forgive, but don't forget. Mm. And that's what I think, I don't know if there's very many situations where I wouldn't give a second chance, but I always will remember uh, the first thing that was done. Mm. Mm. Same. That is true. (laughs) That is true. You you better prove yourself in the second chance bitch like (laughs) kind of like that kind of like that right yeah Yeah, exactly so how you feel too yeah i think (laughs) mel's like no total forgiveness i think it just depends like i don't it it really varies for me it's it's situational yeah i mean i just think very easily to like my relationship with my husband like we Mm -hmm. i gave him men in four or five chances (laughs) like not even second chances but it was always a feeling of you time and place was not right Mm -hmm. and so the second chance came because i was like maybe you've learned a little bit more got more Mm -hmm. attuned with yourself and work through the things that you need to work through and so you're you're back again let's try this again Mm -hmm. you're not there yet come back later that was the kind of feeling that we had there so definitely do believe in second sometimes even third fourth fifth is pushing it but you know (laughs) i'm okay with that too all right between us who is more cautious I will say it depends on the situation. Yeah, that's that's true. All right, give us a situation. I think in general, like, I don't know why I'm like thinking about like dating, like back in the day. Like, okay, yeah. Like, Janet wasn't, I think you're just like, you kind of just like wanted to experience, like, meet people. I threw caution to the wind. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
dating for me i'm more i think i'm more cautious this is true um but i think with other things i'm more like let's just do it kind of thing yeah i could see a situation i don't know what i was like what if it's like we were out one night and then somehow someone was like hey let's go skinny dipping and like jump into the water or something for some reason i feel like i'm oh maybe that one i would be down to do but i could see there's certain... would be down <laughs> yeah i think you'd be down there or like or okay here's what if it was like let's go skydiving oh i'd do it see i could see both of you being down i'd be like no so in that situation, I would be very, like, cautious. Mm. Um, I'm surprised. I feel like you would. I don't – yeah, the skydiving, I don't I don't feel the need to jump out of a plane from so high. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> and maybe that's just, like – I don't know why I have – and, I, yeah, I just have a – I'm like, well, that just feels like – don't need to, like, tempt – Tempt yeah. fate or whatever. You know what it is, too? I think sometimes I associate being cautious with being spontaneous. And mm. that's why I think, Helen, you're totally, like, I don't think you're very cautious. In the best way, though. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. You're, you're that's why like, I, was, I was trying to play around, or I was trying to understand the definition. Because it's, like, other things, if it's, like, caution. Like, I think when it comes to certain types of, like, preparation, Helen is very, like, mm-hmm. uh, like, like, almost like overly cautious yeah, with planning yeah, things yeah. right but yeah but then if it's like a spontaneity thing like yeah, let's yeah. all go do something i feel like then it's a little different yeah i almost feel like with yeah and there's different applications of this right for example with like vulnerability i feel like there's a lot of caution mm, associated mm, with vulnerability and relationships and for that i feel like we're probably more oh i don't know we're i feel like we're mm-hmm. probably my gut tells me that we're probably more cautious in that realm then I think Mel, I'm, I'm Mel Moore is of yeah. an open book. Yeah. So you're less cautious with what will happen with mm. someone handling your feelings. Yes. I, Although you do think about it, but you can't help it. Oh, yeah. But no, for, <laughs> but no, for sure. I think in terms of vulnerability, I'm probably the least cautious. Yeah. It's just like personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Interesting. That's a good question. Speaking that was a good question. Mm. All right. Now I want you to jump out of the plane with me. Yeah. <laughs> because oh. I think you would really enjoy it. Oh, I'm like getting like uncomfortable and antsy just thinking. <laughs> actually, yeah, because that's funny. I think Janet's actually afraid of sky and water. True, yeah, yeah, the you extreme. Don't like water she doesn't like the. If if you, you, you're a land animal. I'm a yeah. Keep me on Earth, the ground. Mm. There's gravity for a reason. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Would you be willing to reduce your life expectancy by five years to become extremely attractive? I actually have a pretty automatic answer for this. Yeah. Um, I would say yes. Because I have learned through growing up in the world how much uh, being attractive can benefit you. Mm. And uh, five years less is not that long, assuming that I will live for a long time. Mm. And it's kind of what it reminds me of that. There's like a quote that's like, I want to leave the world. Like I want to like slide into my grave like a little bit late, maybe half drunk and like whatever. Mm. Like basically living everything out. And um, so, yeah, I've just seen the world is easier on people who are attractive for a lot of weird biological reasons as well as societal Mm. psychological reasons dang that's a really real answer um my automatic was no Mm. i'm surprised i'm surprised by your answer not gonna lie i don't know why yeah i don't know maybe it's the day today i'm just like when i thought about that i was like right would you think that janet i like that she's gonna say no yeah yeah Hmm. Um, I would say no more so because I think now perhaps because I have a kid Mm. I do want to see I do feel like my Mm. years are already shortening and I'm already thinking that in the future I'm going to be an older like older grandma like thinking my my mom's only 65 63 right now but she had me at like 20 something Mm. and I had my kid at like 33 so now I'm just thinking I'm just going to be older so I want to have as much time as I can on this earth and even though it would be nice to be like a supermodel just to see what it's like and I'm sure there's a lot of more not the gawking I don't want the gawking but more more that comes with more ease that comes Mm -hmm. with life curious about that but I don't think it's worth it for me for those extra five years makes total sense I was on the fence because I think it depends. I don't know why. It, for me, it depends on when I'm going. Like, I think when I'm like really old, like 90, I don't think it matters to me at that point. I'm like, mm-hmm. it just matters if I'm happy. Because I thought about like, I want to see my family grow. I'll just spend mm-hmm. another five more years. It's fine. Honestly, I also see what Janet's coming from. Because like, for me, I also feel like there's moments I'm like, I wish I, I wonder how it'd feel like to be, is it five times more attractive? Or just more extremely attractive? Because I, mm-hmm. I get curious. I'm like, I wonder how like Haley Bieber feels, mm-hmm. you know? Or like, I don't know. She gets a lot of hate. I wonder yeah, how yeah. Selena Gomez feels. She also gets a lot, a lot of, of hate. hate. Yeah. But they're it's because they're celebrities though. Yeah. Imagine if you're like not a celebrity. Yeah. I just I'm cur- I, I'm curious. Yeah. But so I'm kind of on the fence, but I think I'd wanna just I I think by when I'm older, I think by then I just probably care more about my family. So I don't know. I'm fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. seventy thirty. For or against? Against actually. 
Mm. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. That's a good an- that's a good question. Yeah, though. it is question. a good question. Well, that wraps today's episode. We played a game of Let's Get Deep, where we went through three levels of questions. This was uh, really interesting. There's mm-hmm. you know unexpected things that you learn about each other, and we also had some unexpectedly like deep conversations. Yeah. Um, so if you're curious, we would definitely recommend checking this out. If I don't know, you got like an hour to kill with some friends on the yeah. couch. This is a great way to spend time getting to know each other better uh once again we are asian boss girl you can find us every thursday here on youtube for our main show and also on tuesdays where we drop our mini shows on spotify apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts uh with that we'll catch you on the next episode bye, bye.